Stop using church intimidation, control and manipulation. Jezebel and all them spirits fall back, not trying to hear it. Go with Jesus, walk in peace. On your pew can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world. I'm that JC Supergirl, Jesus Christ, belt of truth, arm of God, I'm slaying you. Power of the word, two and sword. MC Heaven rocks for her Lord. Thought they crept in unaware. Didn't see the gatekeeper standing right there. Not getting down with your tactics. Undoctrinal practice. Re hey, everybody. Shalom and blessings. Welcome again to the Crystal Jones Show. It's the show that's all about life's balance. And I am your talk show host, Crystal Jones. Thank you for joining in for another episode. Um, you know, you can always catch us on Sunday at bronxnet.tv, Optimum 68, or Fios Channel 2134 at 2.30 p.m. every Sunday from 2.30 to 3.30. Also, you can catch me at Facebook on the Crystal Jones TV show and on YouTube as well. Also, you can go to my Instagram page at the Crystal Jones show. And you can email me if you have questions or anything like that at the Crystal Jones Show at gmail.com. All right, so we're going to get to the news. There's so much going on in today's news. Uh, they're doing the whole new thing about the COVID mask. Now they're saying they, they want, you know, people don't have to use the masks and all of that, you know, kind of stuff. Um, people can go around basically... Oh, without the mask, but this whole COVID thing, it seems like every, you know, every five minutes, things are changing. It's this, it's that, it's the other, you know. So you just have to watch and see what the Bible says, watch as well as pray, you know. So we have to see uh, what's going on uh, with this whole COVID thing. I'm just sure that the medical are making millions of dollars off of this. But anyway... You stay healthy. That's the important thing. Be healthy. You know, be fit. Now that the weather's warm, get out there while you can and uh, get your exercise and all of that kind of stuff. I myself have been doing my exercise, um, you know, things and whatnot. I told you I'd like to jump rope and all of that kind of stuff. So get out there. Even if you can, some people like the rowing, the boating, that kind of thing. Do that. All right. So. Now, also, we're hearing them talk about, you know, the poverty and the homelessness in the news of what's going on. People are out in the street and whatnot, you know, begging. But this is what happens when you are running a country, but you don't care about your people, okay? And you only want a certain group of people to have all the wealth. This is what happens. Eventually... Um, all of these different testings and experiments you've done over the years to afflict that have caused people to be afflicted and sick. Uh, now, more than ever, so many children have autism and all of that kind of thing. Uh, all these shots, they keep giving them like four shots at a time and all of that kind of stuff. And I've told you all, I've had people personally tell me that their children change after receiving so many shots as little kids, little infants and whatnot. And now these kids are artistic. Not only that, you have the people that are in poverty and whatnot, you know, because they're, they're not employed and everything, you know. So now you got a lot of mental people on the streets, just roaming the streets. You don't know what they're going to do, you know, because they're mental, okay? So... It's just totally ridiculous that uh, if you're going to be in charge of a country, please, you know, know what you're doing and, and don't just look out for yourself. And this seems to be the, the, the same thing across the board in all countries, not just here, all countries. It's just that here it's more downplayed, but it's a shame. It's a shame when you don't look out for your own people that live in the country with you because of the color of their skin, or you don't like uh, their, uh, you, you know, their group of people, you know, that they came from their ethnic background and all of that kind of foolery. But in the end, you wind up paying more money because now you have to pay so that these people can get help uh, mentally, physically. They're gonna, you know, 
they're going to be roaming the streets, of course, like some of them are. I, I see them every day down, down midtown. Midtown, y'all. Midtown. Every day I see people midtown walking around. No, you know, nowhere to go, nowhere to sleep. They, they're with these cardboard boxes laying in front of churches right there on Madison Park Avenue. Oh, yeah. All those areas. Every day I see them down there, uh, you know, just going up, just no place to go because they've been thrown out of uh, their different uh, places where they live. Uh, even the projects, the NYCHA and all of that kind of stuff, all of that has worked against a lot of poor people. OK, so this is what happens when you want only one group of people to make it and the rest you're trying to suppress them and leave them in poverty okay so this is what happens now they roam the streets and whatnot and you're sitting back laughing or oh they're lazy they don't want to do this or that but you're lying because a lot of these people did have jobs but because of the different tactics and things that you use to control try to control people and whatnot they lost their jobs and a lot of these jobs weren't even paying them decent wages so in the end you wind up doing things like uh what's going on now having to send people checks for all this amount of money so it pays to do the right thing otherwise you're going to be looking like a fool having to give out all this money because you didn't do the, the right thing in the first place. So now somebody else has to come behind you and try to clean up your mess, right? So it's just sad. And I mean, it's all over the news. People are killing each other, shootings, uh, breaking into people's houses, beating, uh, beating up the elderly and doing things to the poor children. But Jesus said that he said, woe to them who give suck in those days and, and have and bear children because the time would be like it is today that uh, people would just be out of control. And he said, except he shortened those days, there shall no flesh be saved. And that's in Matthew, the 24th chapter. So on your own time, you can, um, you know, go to that and, and read it and see that Christ was right on point as to where we are today so it's just shameful and it's really it's disgusting when i think about it you're a human being but you think you're above people why you have skin like we do you have blood like we do and you're really for nobody it's like people get into these high offices just to get what's theirs just to do i'm gonna do me and you know, they fool people and make them think like, oh, okay, well, this group of people, y'all are all right. But you who are following that, you're being foolish because eventually they coming for you too, okay? And you're going to be on the streets and all of that stuff too because if they're not for you, they're not for anybody. They're for themselves, right? So when are we going to wake up as, you know, and come together on what's going on? So this is why I continue to uh, encourage the black community. Don't you see what's going on as far as um, replacement is taking place now? They're going to, they're basically going to be replacing these jobs with people who will take low, low salaries. So there won't be any jobs eventually, right? So we've got to get off of this system all together these jobs are going away and this is why we have to continue in black excellence and in doing our own uh businesses and llcs and stuff like that we have to because sooner or later there really won't be any jobs the, the jobs will go to the people that they could take advantage of as far as you know paying them whatever uh they feel like paying them so i want to continue to, to uh, encourage the black community, stay together, get together. We have more communities that are on the rise. Washington, D.C., that's why part of why they're having the fight is because a lot of blacks in Washington are on six-figure salary. They are really, really on the rise doing a lot. And they don't like that because why? We built 
Washington, D.C., okay, for free. We built the country for free. So now that God is blessing us and our people are really, really doing it there and making it, they don't want to see that place become a state. They don't. And they, and they try to always try to play it undercut, like, oh, well, well, how could they become a state when this, when that, when the other? But, you know, you, you really know what the real deal is. But so we're going to continue with our Black Excellence list today. And we're going to see some of the other Black neighborhoods that are here in the United States of America. All right. So we're going to roll right to that. Number six zip code 27214 in Brown Summit, Greensboro, North Carolina, Guilford County. Brown Summit is a small unincorporated community in Guilford County, North Carolina that lies just northeast of Greensboro. Brown Summit is a growing and upcoming area due to the proximity to Greensboro, which is only 10 minutes away. The area has plenty of new housing developments in progress and is home to the Bryan Park Complex and a 36-hole Champions Golf Course. Just a few minutes away, Greensboro is part of the Piedmont Triad and it's nicknamed the Gate City with good reason. It's a short road trip to and from all the major cities in North Carolina. There is no shortage of arts, entertainment, recreation, shopping, and restaurants to keep locals busy. Greensboro is home to the region's largest hospital and it boasts 170 well-kept public parks and gardens. A broad range of neighborhoods offers a diverse array of homes to satisfy different tastes, and a strong sense of community makes North Carolina's third largest metro area feel like a small town where the residents are neighborly. Zip code 27214 in Greensboro area has an African American population of over 3,500, which represents 33% of the area's total population. The Brown Summit Greensboro community is one of those places that's big enough to have everything you need, but small enough for you to regularly bump into people you know. The BB&T Soccer Complex at Bryan Park is very popular with families and young ones, as it is one of the most beautiful soccer complexes in the country. The adjacent Lake Townsend Park is the largest of Greensboro's municipal reservoirs and was built for recreational activities such as fishing, kayaking, sailboating, and much more. This community has a Niche.com rating of an A due to its great diversity, great housing market, and a good family environment. The city center generally attracts millennials and students, while the broader metro area attracts more families. The graduation rate for high school students living in zip code 27214 is 87%. The school system that serves this area has a ratio of 15 students per teacher. The economy of Greensboro, North Carolina employs 139,000 people. The three highest paid jobs held by residents of Greensboro, North Carolina by median earnings are one, legal occupations, two, architecture and engineering occupations, and three, computer engineering and science occupations. Number five, zip code 27616 in Raleigh, North Carolina, Wake County. Raleigh is the state capital of North Carolina, and with rising numbers of Black Americans moving to the South, Raleigh has been one of the biggest beneficiaries. Between its family-friendly atmosphere, great quality of life, and welcoming Southern community, it's no wonder people are moving to the City of Oaks. The Raleigh metropolitan area has finished among the top three in Forbes' best places to live for the past 15 years and has by far been the most consistent performer of any city in the country. Raleigh boasts one of the most educated labor forces in the U.S. As part of the Tech Hub Research Triangle Park, Raleigh leads in the fields of high-tech and biotech research. The area is also home to some of the most prestigious custom home builders and award-winning neighborhoods in the nation. Raleigh is also a great preserver of art, as it contains one of the most premier art collections of the North Carolina Museum of Art. The City of Oaks can be one with a thriving nightlife, unique history, fascinating architecture, and unique culinary options on every corner. 
Zip Code 27616 in Raleigh, North Carolina has an African-American population of over 21,000, which represents 38% of the zip code's total population. Some of the key factors that researchers and surveyed citizens rank high include economic health, public school performance, nightlife, cost of living, housing, and diversity. This community has a Niche.com rating of an outstanding A+, due to its diversity, great housing market, and excellent family environment. The graduation rate for high school students living in zip code 27616 is 87%. The school system that serves this area has a ratio of 16 students per teacher. The economy of Raleigh, North Carolina employs 717,000 people. The three highest paid jobs held by residents of Raleigh, North Carolina by median earnings are one, computer, engineering, science occupations, two, architecture and engineering occupations, and three, professional and technical services. Number four, zip code 27703 in Durham, North Carolina, Durham County. Durham is a city committed to being great and finding ways to improve, whether it's increasing the job market or building more infrastructure. Its distinctive cultural characteristic is a byproduct of its wonderful transformation from a downtown dominated by tobacco factories into a vibrant southern town. Durham is an inexpensive place to live, relatively speaking, for the folks moving from other states. Durham has a great feeling of community, and that is the direct result of the city's history, culture, North Carolina Central, Duke, and the number of diverse people who are transitioning to the area. Zip code 27703 in Durham has an African-American population of almost 26,000, which represents 51% of the zip code's total population. Durham is home to the best neighborhoods in the Triangle area, especially if you love living among mature trees and a beautiful nature scene, yet in the proximity to the action. Durham's downtown area is full of one-of-a-kind shops, award-winning restaurants featuring locally sourced food, and international cuisine. This community has a Niche.com rating of an A due to its great diversity, job opportunities, and a good family environment. The graduation rate for high school students living in zip code 27703 is 83%. The school system that serves this area has a ratio of 15 students per teacher. The economy of Durham, North Carolina employs 150,000 people. The three highest paid jobs held by residents of Durham, North Carolina by median earnings are one, computer and mathematical occupations, two, architecture and engineering occupations, and three, professional public administration and utilities occupations. Number three, zip code 28269 in Charlotte, North Carolina, Mecklenburg County. With an average of 122 people moving to Charlotte each day, this bustling metropolis is poised for continued growth. Charlotte's millennial population growth ranks as one of the highest in the nation, and it is the third fastest growing major city in the United States. Charlotte's fascinating balance of old-fashioned Southern charm and high-energy cosmopolitan bustle is part of the reason why it's consistently ranked as one of the best places in the country to live. One huge advantage of living in Charlotte that residents mention over and over again is its geographical location. Outdoor adventures are no exception here. Charlotte is just a few hours from both the beach and the mountains. However, there are also a few outdoor sites even closer to the city that are worth noting, like Lake Norman. Zip code 28269 in Charlotte has an African-American population of almost 38,000, which represents 46% of the zip code's total population. Charlotte hosts some of the hottest artists and entertainers in the world, but if you're looking for a more relaxed vibe, you can chill at one of the 100 plus venues that cater to local musicians. This community has a Niche.com rating of an A due to its great diversity, nightlife, and a great family environment. The graduation rate for high school students living in zip code 28269 is an impressive 92%. The school system that serves this area has a ratio of 17 students per teacher. Charlotte Mecklenburg School System is home to more than 130,000 students. 
The economy of Charlotte, North Carolina employs 473,000 people. The three highest paid jobs held by residents of Charlotte, North Carolina by median earnings are one, financial and insurance occupations, two, computer engineering science occupations, and three, legal occupations. Number two, zip code 27713 in Durham, North Carolina, Durham County. Durham is a historical haven, a sanctuary for the spectacular, and a rough cut gem waiting to be unearthed. Durham's been a destination on the move for more than 150 years. There's no doubt about it, Durham has lots to offer. A celebrated food scene and world-renowned entrepreneurial startup culture. Seeds of equality and justice were planted here long ago, and they have blossomed into a colorful community where murals tell their proud story of inclusivity. From high employment rates and short commutes to a thriving cultural scene, Durham is drawing huge numbers of people from all over the country looking to plant their roots somewhere new and southern. Compared to other technology cities, Durham is definitely on the lower end in terms of cost of living and housing. If you are looking for a culture center that is centered around restaurants and entertainment, then Durham has a growing foodie scene that has gained plenty of national attention. Its collection of bars, live music, and vibrant downtown are just a few other reasons why this city is all over the top 10 list. Zip code 27713 in Durham has an African-American population of over 20,000, which represents 37% of the zip code's total population. Population. Its Parks and Recreation Department manages a whopping 68 parks, which means there are loads of green spaces to enjoy without leaving city limits. This community has a Niche.com rating of an A+, due to its excellent diversity, job opportunities, and an exceptional family environment. The graduation rate for high school students living in zip code 27713 is an impressive 94%. The school system that serves this area has a ratio of 15 students per teacher. Nearly half of all the schools in Durham Public School system are magnet schools. So it's not surprising that the top four schools in the area are public schools. Let's not forget that it's home to HBCU excellence with North Carolina Central University and the world-class institution of higher learning in Duke University. The economy of Durham, North Carolina employs 150,000 people. The three highest paid jobs held by residents in Durham, North Carolina by median earnings are one, computer and mathematical occupations, two, architecture and engineering occupations, and three, professional public administration and utilities occupations. Number one, zip code 28278 in Charlotte, North Carolina, Mecklenburg County. And to round off our list of the top upper middle class zip codes in North Carolina, we have zip code 28278 in Charlotte. If you're moving to Charlotte and you're not from the South, here's the good news. Most residents aren't. The area has become a melting pot and entertainment mecca for people from all around the country. From its charming bungalows and vibrant nightlife to commercial hubs and family-friendly communities, it's no wonder Charlotte has made Forbes list and a plethora of other top 10 places to live. Charlotte is one of the nation's largest banking hubs, and with its popular climate throughout all four seasons, it is home to sports teams in baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. There are numerous new neighborhoods and historic districts that provide you with some distance from the hustle and bustle of the city, but still offer the convenience of a short drive to uptown Charlotte. Many of these family-friendly residential communities feature not only beautiful homes, local shops, restaurants, beautiful parks, but also close proximity to high-ranked schools. Living in Charlotte offers residents an urban-suburban mixed feel, and there are lots of restaurants, coffee shops, and parks as well. Zip code 28278 in Charlotte has an African-American population of almost 8,200, which represents 30% of the zip code's total population. Charlotte is a region that's equal parts old-fashioned Southern charm and high-energy cosmopolitan. The Queen City is a crown jewel of the South thanks to its history and unique culture. 
Its modern uptown area will not disappoint whether you are a brewery buff or a cocktail devotee. Charlotte is a city on the rise where creativity meets innovation. Its enticement is characterized by its own culture, culinary sophistication, high quality of life, and an awesome job market. This community has a Niche.com rating of an A due to its excellent diversity, housing communities, and a great family environment. The graduation rate for high school students living in zip code 28278 is 93%. The school system that serves this area has a ratio of 17 students per teacher. The economy of Charlotte, North Carolina employs 473,000 people. The three highest paid jobs held by residents of Charlotte, North Carolina by median earnings are one, financial and insurance occupations, two, computer engineering science occupations, and three, legal occupations. Kids! I don't want to talk about it. 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 Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Kids, you all right? This family's prepared. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. Go to nyc.gov slash readyny or call 311 for more information. All right. So we are now going to, on a Saturday note, go into our missing youth as we do weekly. Um, we have uh, three youth that uh, are missing and we would like the help of the public to help find these young people and bring them home to their families. The first one that we have is um, Savion Hyde, okay? He is, he's been missing since May, uh, May 4th of this year, okay? He is 18 years old now, okay? He's an 18-year-old youth, all right, from Syosset, New York, all right? He's a male biracial. His hair color is brown. His eye color is brown. He's about five foot six, and he weighs 150 pounds. So if you see Savion, please let the police know in your area. Let them know that you've seen him so that he can be returned safely to his family, okay? The next one that we have missing is we have Caitlin Luck, all right? Caitlin has been missing since May the 11th from Walden, New York, okay? She's 16 years old, female, white. She has blonde hair, blue eyes. Uh, her height is five foot two, and she's about 134 pounds. So she's been missing from the Walden, New York area. If you have any information on her, you know where she is, please report that to the local police for the missing and exploited children so that um, she can be found and brought back to her family, all right? And the next one that we have, the third person, we have Tony Boyce, okay? She's been missing since May the 3rd of this year, 2021 from New York, New York, all right? Um, she's 16 years old. She's a female, black female. She has brown hair, brown eyes. She's five foot six and 125 pounds. If you have seen Tony, please get in touch with the police so that she also can be uh, brought home to her family, all right? So this is important, everybody. Please let's, um, you know, let's help out with uh, these, you know, these missing youth. Because, I mean, like I always say, if it's your family member, 
you would want somebody to, um, you know, help and find uh, your youth. You wouldn't want, you know, your youth to just be missing like that and uh, nobody, you know, seems to care or, you know, wants to um, help out as far as, you know, finding them. You'd be getting together, your neighborhood watching, the, the, the tenants association and board of directors, whoever. You would be getting people together to find your youth. So let's be considerate like as if it's our own. Because they are our own. They are our own children. Uh, the children in my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? They might not be my kids, but I consider them like my own. Anything go down with them, you know what I'm saying? I want to be involved. All right? So the next part, we're going to spotlight on our youth. Woo! All right? Today, we have Miss Najee Graham Henrys. She is the world's youngest barber and isn't letting her age get in the way of her goals. So we're going to go to a quick video of Najee uh, Graham Henry's. All right, we're going to check her out. Let's see what she's up to. Okay, I cut hair. And I'm eight years old, and I'm DJ Graham Hendricks. I took my son to the barber orientation, and as the time was approaching for us to enroll, he decided that it was something that you know he was not interested in. And my daughter saw pictures from the orientation online, and of course she's asking questions because she sees her brother and she expressed interest at that point. I was really surprised because she obviously didn't know what barbering was prior to, but I think part of the reason why she was so driven to give it a try was because my son said that he didn't want to do it. Okay, he doesn't want to do it, let me give it a shot. She's fearless about her interest and she kind of really doesn't care what other people think about boys being drawn to it she likes it so it's it's okay you know for her i get it a zone i'm not really the one who talks to the client a lot not the person who says how's your day blah 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 talk about it blah. because crazy i'm not that person i like it to be quiet Outside of barbering, she learned life skills that she'll be able to carry with her. She was learning to understand the power of her voice. She didn't shy away from asking for help. She didn't care if the guys were there and that they were bigger. She was just kind of determined to get the information that she needed so that she could be the best barber that she could be. I kind of look at her when she started to where she is today. She's grown so much. So I'm really excited about the growth, her growth as an individual, and then her growth within the industry. So those are the things that I'm really excited about. I'm very, very, very happy that her character is intact. That's what matters to me, and that she's becoming a decent human being. Honestly, she did better than I thought. She did way better than I thought. I didn't expect it to be this sharp. I got better what I was looking for. King. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. All right, so we're so proud of Najee Graham Henry's, the youngest barber. She's uh, this nine year old spends her time going to school and giving free haircuts to those in need. And at the same time, mastering her skills from Philadelphia Barbara, excuse me, miss. Young Graham Henry's is confident about her career in a male dominated profession and her resolve to pursue her passion has won her world record Academy title 
of world's youngest barber. All right, sister girl, you great. She, uh, uh, this is what I'm talking about. This is what we do, y'all. This is what we do. From our babies to the oldest person in our communities. Come on, y'all. Our young people, God is blessing them. They are doing it. And we doing it too. So we just got to keep sticking together. So thank God for little Najee Graham Henry. Shout out to you. Blessings. And we want to see more of this in our black communities. All right. So now we're going to go to our next segment, which is health and wellness. All right. Now with health and wellness, what I want to say to you is work at what you eat. Is it healthy or not? Right. Work at it. You know, sometimes you, if you're used to just eating cupcakes and all that kind of stuff, you're going to have to gradually get yourself off of that. What I do every day, I pack salads. I do different salads each week. Um, some weeks I may have salads that have uh, cabbage in it or Brussels sprouts, um, all different types of lettuce and things like that. Change it up. Also, uh, spinach. You know, I put pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, uh, all kind of different um, peanuts and things like that. You can mash them up in your your blender so that, you know, you could sprinkle them on top of the salad. I love balsamic vinaigrette. Sometimes I get the honey one, the wine uh, balsamic vinaigrette, and the regular one. Those are awesome. Pa I pack, you know, salads each day. So uh, during the, my lunch breaks and stuff like that, I eat salads. Or sometimes if I feel like, you know what, I really wish I could have a, a Twinkie. You know, or something like that. I'm not gonna. Then I don't. Not gonna eat the Twinkie. I'm gonna eat the salad, and put some raisins in there. Put the uh, cran the cranberry raisins and stuff like that, so that that'll help your sweet tooth. You know what I'm saying? But it takes time. And when you, if you do, you know, some days you are gonna, you know, eat something that you shouldn't. But you, you say to yourself, is that healthy or not? Because if it's not healthy, you're really helping your body to go down. So what, what's right for you? You got to change your mindset so that you can, you know, lose those pounds and everything like that, right? Also, like I said, continue, you know, with your exercising. Please exercise, get a bike, um, skateboard, skates, um, jog some, uh, do the squats that I was telling you about. You know, you don't have to do deep squats, but you can, you know, you can do what your weight size can can carry do just do those squats bounce the bounce squats you know what i'm saying do those do um jump rope and any you know find something that you like to do some people i see them out here on the water canoeing that's something i want to get i would love to do that i'm, I'm thinking about trying to do that this summer i want to do the canoeing and stuff like that um even when people go camping they go hiking do something that's going to have you exercising because that will help keep the pounds off exercise and eating right but don't give up it's not going to come overnight it's going to take you years to really get to where you need to be okay so that's um that for health and wellness now let's go to the business tips business tips if you need an accountant look for an affordable one all right these accounts cost a lot of money you know, you may want to get somebody who's in college and just wants to, you know, who is very good, but they, you know, they're not going to charge you. They want to get a start so that they can put something on their resume, right? Also, software is an option. You know, go to like Best Buy and ask them what are their best accounting softwares, okay? And you can look through those and see. If, you know, that's something that's easier for you, maybe easier for you to use some type of accounting software that, you know, you could just use yourself and you can do it from your phone or your iPad or whatever and keep track of, you know, um, those things. OK, so definitely uh, that's a business tip that you need. Please, you know, keep track of your uh, transactions and things like that in your business. Because at the end of the year, at the end of the time that, you know, 
each year you do your taxes for your business, you know, you're going to want to have things uh, like they should be so that nothing pops up and they don't come after you for something crazy because, you know, you, you, you really don't need that. OK, so definitely software, like I said, is an option. All right. So for today, everyone, we are going to go back into our list lesson that we've been uh, doing regarding uh, the children of Israel. Right. OK, so today's lesson is going to be coming from Exodus, the 34th chapter through the book of Leviticus. OK, I'm going to um, do this as quick as I can because I, I don't have much time you know, uh, for, for, you know, today with this segment. All right. So now you, we sing here in Exodus, the 34th chapter that, uh, the Lord had told Moses, okay, I'm not going to kill the people for, I'm not going to get rid of those people because they, they don't obey me. They messing up. Okay. I'm not going to, but this is what I want you to do. He tells Moses to hew two tables of stone. Cause remember Moses got so mad when he saw them down there, uh, worshiping the the golden calf and all of that, that he broke the commandments. He just threw them down, right? So the Lord said, okay, get two uh, tables of stone like the first one. I'll write on these tables the words that were in the first tables which you broke, right? So he said, be ready in the morning. Come up to Mount Sinai. Again, Mount Sinai is a place of blessing for us. It's a place where God meets with us, all right? So, um, he said, uh, come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, present yourself there to me on the top of the mount. Again, he doesn't want the people to come and all of that. Like he said before, um, you know, don't let them come and, and see or be, you know, be there where I'm talking to you. Because why? These people are not prepared to uh, be in the presence of the Lord because they're very stiff necked. Right. So the Lord hewed out the two tables of stone. And he descended, the Lord descended in a cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord, right? Which is, I am that I am, right? Um, so the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children. So sometimes you see people, you know, families going through different things. Some of these are generational curses. So the Lord is saying he is going to get the guilty. When you're doing something you got no business doing, you're not only cursing yourself, but you bringing it upon the generations that are to follow. And that's the thing that our people did. So that had nothing to do with the white man type of thing, okay? That had to do with our people being stubborn and rebellious because, like I said, at this time, you know, there really weren't white people around. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, we can't put everything on the white man. Yeah, there were different things that happened. If y'all saw the Underground Railroad this, this weekend, I saw it. And those things really happened. Those were terrible things. But because we kept disobeying the Lord and and uh, making friends with these nations that were doing things like passing their kids through the fire and and, and um, offering them them up to Molech and all of these false gods, right? So the Lord is he he visits that iniquity on not just us but our children, our children's children. So you don't just live for yourself. You're living for nations of people. So this is why you need to have your act together and serve the Lord in spirit and in truth, right? So Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth. He worshiped the Lord. He said, if I found grace in your sight, Lord, let me, um, let me, um, he, okay, he said, I'm sorry. If I found grace in thy sight, oh Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us for it is a stiff necked people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for thine inheritance. So Moses, again, pleading with God, please don't get rid of us. I know our people bugging out, they crazy, but please, you know, have mercy on us. So the Lord saw something in Moses there and he's, you know, 
And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvelous, I will do marvelous, such as you have not been seen or done in the earth, nor in any nation. All the all among the people which you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is terrible thing that I will do with thee, meaning it's terribly great that I'm gonna do amongst. And I'm looking at how God has blessed us with just, I mean, just the, even the physical things, the melanin. I mean, uh, come on, our men are so strong in athletics. That's why they make these um, pills and shots is to try to be in competition with our body makeup. Because no matter what they seem to do to us, we still seem to, to make it through. A lot, so a lot of our people may die, but you also see our people still come back strong and stronger, you know. So we have the best athletes. I mean, our guys come here buffed, you know. Even little kids. Sometimes you see little kids outside. They in the summertime they take off their shirt and they strapped, you know. And I'm saying, and this comes from the melanin, the the dust of the earth. We're made from the seven layers of the dirt. You know, and God put all that together and just that 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 stuff that that's within our skin and stuff like that is like no other nation of people. So he said, observe that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before you the, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, Perizzite, the Havite, the Je Jebusite. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither you go. Lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Meaning don't make covenants with these people because they're going to cause you to error. And this is where we're at now. We're in this country because why? Of what happened. And we're in a land where these people continue to error. They continue to make governments and statues and things that are against us. They're not for our good. So this is due to rebellion. This is why we landed here, all right? So you shall destroy their altars, break their images, cut down their groves, for you will worship no other God. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. He told us that in his Ten Commandments, thou shalt have no other gods before me, right? All right, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land and they go a whoring after their gods and do sacrifice unto their gods and won't call thee and you eat their sacrifice. You know, sometimes you go into these stores and things and they have their idols up and whatnot. No, we ain't supposed to be serving them things and bowing down to, this is why we need to start doing our own thing to serve our God. We do not need to be bowing down to these idols that these other nations and things worship, all right? If you take your daughters unto, if, if, if you take their daughters unto your sons and their daughters go a whoring after their gods and make your sons go whoring after the gods, after their gods. Now, it used to be where the family marriage was like a family business deal. Like the father and the mother would pick your mates, you know, so that you wouldn't be people of other cultures that serve idols, that serve other gods, you know. You want to continue on being the Hebrew Israelite that we are. We're Hebrew, we're Hebrew by blood, all right? We're, we're Israelites by uh, nationality, all right? So, and they're even starting to admit that. I saw recently a rabbi was online saying that the Negroes in America are the true Hebrew Israelites, the original ones. We are the bloodline Hebrews, all right? And we don't need to break that line. And we don't hate anybody, but just like they want their cultures to go on, we want ours to go on, okay? So now it says, you shall make no molten gods. These people make molten gods and bow down to them and do all kind of things. I've seen on the streets where they sacrifice little animals and stuff like that. They cut them up and throw, oh, it's just all kind of weird stuff, right? We ain't supposed to be involved in that, all right? The Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Lord is saying to keep, so we have to keep the feast, right? Now, we have, um, I'm going to try to, you know, I'm probably going to, I'm going to have to come back next week and, and do more. But it'll be basically, we're going to be uh, finishing up 
uh, the book of the of uh, Exodus and going into uh, Leviticus. All right. So now. He said, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you will keep seven days. You will eat unleavened bread as I commanded you in the time of the month of Bib. For in the month of Bib, you came out of Egypt. All that openeth the matrix is mine. Remember, your firstborn belongs to the Lord. Okay? So that's in honor of when we came out of Egypt. All right? The firstborn, because he killed the firstborn of Pharaoh's kids, of Pharaoh and all the Egyptians that were against us, he took their firstborn out. So our firstborn belong to the Lord God Almighty. All right. So all that openeth the matrix is mine. Every firstling among the cattle, your cattle, but the firstling of an ass you shall redeem with a lamb. And if you redeem him not, then shall you, you know, it tells you all the different things that you you're supposed to do. He's, and then he reiterates, six days you will work, but on the seventh day is a day of rest. In earring time and in harvest, you will rest. That's when you know you're bringing in the food and stuff like that for the harvest time and whatnot. Um, you will observe the Feast of Weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end. I'll eventually go into what different feasts mean. All right. For I will cast out the nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. This is when he was bringing us into Israel. He was he was casting out the Hivites, the Javites, and all of those people. Because those people began to serve the angel that were God placed over their nation of people. This is why they're out of order. So no nation can really talk about any nation. Because all the nations is crazy. All right? So... We have to get back in order. And why they're out of order is because God put angels over each nation of people. But they chose to serve the angels over those nations. And God never told them to do that. All of them have angels over that that are head of them. But God chose us for his heritage. We're the only one that, that we're supposed to be dealing direct with God. Because we are a royal generation, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. We're supposed to bring the nations to serve the Lord. If you read in Revelation, it'll tell you that once Christ returns and we're back in the land, we're going to cause the nations to come and serve the Lord. It won't be all this craziness going on like now. People kill and shoot and all, all that stuff. is When Christ comes, he's he going to stop that mess. And it's, you know, the world, he, he said, behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth. Why does he have to do that? Because this place is polluted. All the trafficking, sexual trafficking. And I mean, stuff every week I hear of stuff that is just disgusting that's going on. And nations of people are involved in this. All right. So they don't need to talk about us. They need to get their people right. All right. So now. He said, I will cast out the nations before you in larger borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God three times in a year. So three times in a year, they were supposed to go up before the Lord and prevent, present themselves. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, neither shall the sacrifice of, of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. Okay, so he goes into... Uh, the different, you know, feasts and things like that. And the Lord said to Moses, write thou these words, but after the tenor of these words, okay, he's saying after the tenor uh, of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. So he's made that covenant with us before he brings us into the land. This is why you're going to see the nation's people are going to start getting back with their own people because we have to now come together because Christ is going to be returning to the earth eventually. Right now, we're going to go through uh, the time of sorrow and, <coughs> excuse me, tribulation. The time of tribulation is soon at hand. What you see going on now, wear a mask, do this, do that, and the other, it, it, it's just going to go, we're going we to have a lot of different things that we're going to be going through. Right now, The um, they, they're unleashing 
these weird uh, insects and stuff like that into the atmosphere and all kind of stuff like that. Okay, so you're gonna we're gonna be seeing some weird, crazy stuff going on. So enjoy what you can while you can, because after a while, it's gonna amp up. It, it, it is. It's amping up each week. You know, you seeing them do things to people in in uh, on the trains, on the buses, uh, within families, and all of that. But I, like Christ said, He came for the lost house of Israel. I'm doing the same. Plus, I'm here to tell the Gentiles, you need to stop serving those idols and come to the true and the living God, the God who made heaven and earth. The God who put placed an angel over your nation of people, not for you to worship them, but for you to worship the true and the living God. Come back to the Lord's statutes and commandments of the Lord. That's the only way that we really prosper that we prospered and did well. All this other crazy stuff, that's people being tricked by the adversary because the devil knows that his time is short. Okay. Um you know that this earth can't last the way that it, it it's it is now it's 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 just going to get worse okay but in the meantime let's gather together with our people and do what god has for us to do because he made us a nation of people and we have there's 12 of us so we have to come together and do what god tells us to do all right so i'm going to continue next week and thank you all for joining in to the Crystal Jones Show. Again, watch me Sunday from 2.30 to 3.30. Um, you can watch me at bronxnet.tv, Optimum on channel uh, 68, Fios 2134. Also, you can see me on Facebook and YouTube at The Crystal Jones TV Show. Make sure you type that in. That way you'll pop up to my TV show page, not my personal page, my TV show page. All right. And also you can see me at um, Instagram at, at the Crystal Jones Show and email me at the Crystal Jones Show at gmail.com. All right. So I'll see you again next week. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. You stay safe out there. Trust in the Lord. Return to the Lord and do his commandments and his will. And in the meantime, you stay back. Stop using church intimidation, control and manipulation. Jezebel and all them spirits fall back, not trying to hear it. Go with Jesus, walk in peace. On your pew can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world. I'm that JC Supergirl, Jesus Christ, belt of truth, arm of God, I'm slaying you. Power of the word to and sword. MC Heaven rocks for her Lord. Thought they crept in unaware. Didn't see the gatekeeper standing right there. Not getting down with your tactics, undoctrinal practice. I don't remember how it started. Oh. Oh Our back and forth. Victory. Fumble. Repeat. It always came back. <laughs> Yeah. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Nice. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit. And now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stop smoking. Now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org.